Hello, this is Peter with another video. So today I'm going to be doing an overview of all my banana plants, um, both planted in ground and in containers. So I'm just showing the Musabaji first. Um, yeah, you can see it's getting pretty big now. Um, I will do a separate standalone video on the Musabaji again soon. Um, and for those that are wanting to overwinter their Musabajus, um, I'll link to the latest overwintering video I did last year um, but I will be doing another video later in the year once it's ready to um, start overwintering it. Um, I've had a few people um, ask me on my older videos when I start to overwinter them um, so in my location I don't usually have to worry about hard frosts until late November early December so I think the last two years it's been early to mid-December before I've actually needed to cover these um, Musabaji plants um, but they can take a light frost no problem whatsoever um, it's only once you get hard frost will actually completely take out all the leaves um, and at that point you probably want to um, cover it up and like I said I will cover that in more detail in a separate video um, but yeah definitely made some progress this year uh, much slower than last year um, due to the weather unfortunately but it's definitely still growing pretty quickly um, and especially at the moment we're having a little bit of a heat wave um, in early September here so it's absolutely loving this uh, weather at the moment so right next to the Musabaju I have my Manzano banana um, now this one if you remember my earlier videos um, actually came out of the side this was one of the original leaves so it was a bit taller and the leaves couldn't come out the top for whatever reason so I decided to come out the side and it's now effectively formed a new pseudo stem the old one is kind of gone I guess um, but yeah it's looking quite healthy now um, all this new growth this year it's a shame that it's effectively started from the ground again and because it's been such a, a cool summer hasn't grown very fast um, but yeah I'm hoping I'll be able to keep this main stem um, over winter and of course it's not finished yet it's going to keep growing for at least another couple of months um, I imagine it's going to probably slow down once we get into October but it might still grow a leaf or two every um, few weeks over the next um, month or so. So here I have uh, my Dwarf Orinoco. Um, it's actually leaning towards me and also to the side a little bit. Um, I did plant it straight um, but I think that's mostly because it had quite a small um, root ball because it was in a, a container and my old one that I had here last year um, didn't make it through the winter so I replanted this one um, which was in a container last year. Um, you can see um, it has grown yeah, about five leaves. I think one did get damaged and uh, came off in the wind at some point. And it's getting another one now. Again, absolutely brilliant weather for them at the moment. Just a shame we didn't have this in July and August. Um, so next we have the Rajapuri. And this is the one that I had here last year as well. Um, did die back a little bit um, and has uh, come up again since so yeah probably lost about half a pseudo stem it's recovered back to pretty much where it was last year um, but yeah obviously it's not made much progress this year um, it did get two pups towards the end of last year so I'm hoping I might be able to get some more pups this year if I'm lucky uh, it hasn't pushed any out yet um, but yeah it's always time I think it came quite late in the season last year um, but yeah it's looking all right over here we have the dwarf Brazilian and this was a new one I planted this year you can see it's actually the leaves are folding up because it's quite warm and dry at the moment um, I'll probably give these a bit of a watering later when the sun goes down um, but yeah seems to be doing quite well in the ground um, just wanted to experiment with a different variety to see um, how it does 
So Dwarf Brazilian is supposed to be a cool summer tolerant plant, similar to Rajapuri um, and some of the others I grow. See so it's just starting to get another leaf there. It did also lose a leaf I think earlier in the year. Um, and yeah, they always um, take a couple of months to get growing um, here, once you get them planted. If we had the weather like we have now all summer, it would have grown two or three times the size. Um, but yeah, just unfortunate this summer has not worked out too good this year. And yes, that is a lychee seedling. I know it's not going to survive here, I just had quite a few of them to experiment with, so I wanted to just put it there and see how long it survives for. So this is another Dwarf Orinoco pup, hasn't grown that much this year. Um, kept it in a little pot, um, probably needs feeding as well, um, but yeah, probably not going to grow much more now. They definitely grow better in the ground if you can put them in the ground, um, but yeah, we'll uh, probably give it a bigger pot next year. So here is a second Rajapuri. This one was a pup that I uh, got off my other plant last year. I overwintered it indoors. Um, you can see it has been doing quite well. I'd say it's grown probably similar to the one I've, the other one I've got in ground. This one is in a completely south facing position. It gets sun all day. Um, but it is a lot smaller so it's not got as much energy and does grow slower when the smaller like this. So over here we have a Musa Valentina, not done too well this year, might, might need a bit of a watering actually, it's quite dry at the moment. If you watched my last update video, um, you might have seen I put this Super Dwarf Cavendish here, which hasn't done anything. It's still alive though, which is uh, I suppose a good thing, but the soil is very sandy and dry here. And this is one of my Enceti ventricosum morelliis. Um, so yes, it's not the Musa species, but um, it's usually classed as a banana. Um, very ornamental, um, but hasn't done very well this year. Something has been attacking it as well. It's kind of filling moths of some, some sort. I have another one that I planted at the front of the house. Should probably do a separate video on. Um, on the front planting um, at, a, at a later date. So in the greenhouse I have a couple of bananas as well. Um, this is my dwarf cavendish or one of my dwarf cavendish plants uh, which I moved into here to see how it did in the greenhouse and um, it's grown pretty well. Um, has got quite dry in here the last few days because it's been pretty sunny um, it's currently in the shade, it's 33 degrees Celsius in here. Um, so yeah, pretty warm at the moment. So yeah, it has started to get this red blotching on the leaves. So the younger leaves haven't got it, but the later leaves are starting to get it. Um, and as the plant matures, it'll lose that coloration as well. Um, and next to it, I have a another dwarf, Orinoco. And this one's actually done really well. Um, it's growing quite fast at the moment. Um, yeah, so they're, they're doing much better in here than the, the ones I've got on the patio. Um, but yeah, the only problem is the extra heat. You have to keep on top of the watering and make sure to open the door on very sunny days like today. So I've got another couple of bananas in here which I've only got recently. This one at the back is a Musa Thompsonii. Um, yeah, it's not done too well because it's in a very small container, so it needs repotting. Um, it dries out very, very quickly. I'll get that repotted today, probably. Yeah, I had to keep a close eye on the temperatures, as I mentioned before. Also, I've got some more um, Grand Name bananas. Uh, these ones, as you can see, have also suffered from um, the excessive heat. Um, another one here as well. They were looking quite nice when I got them. They'll recover as long as I uh, keep on top of the watering. So yeah, I pretty much got to water every day in here when it's sunny like this. Here I have a couple of small uh, plants. We've got a Musa Thompsonii here, which was uh, a small corm. Um, 
which planted this year has pushed out a few leaves um, and then I've got the Musa Dagiao um, two of them here um, which have been trying to slowly recover after winter put them outside a while ago but they've only just started to grow um, so yeah, I'm not sure if these will survive another winter it's going to be quite difficult, I might have to bare root them um, again but yeah, we'll keep an eye on them so this one's another dwarf Orinoco came from a plant I got many years ago from Germany way before Brexit and um, the main plant died but it did push out a pup um, over winter so I kept that um, in its own pot wanted to um, keep all the different sources of plants I've got separate so then if one turns out to be a different variety at least I know I've got them all labelled so I know which one's which um, this is another Musa Velatina here we have a supposed Musa Hajare which I've never heard of before but it sounded interesting so I decided to get it um, it's only just started to push out it's been very slow indoors so I brought it outside hopefully it does better outside then here we have a couple of Musa Sikimensis um, these are the variety Bengal Tiger Musa Sikimensis Bengal Tiger you see they get this incredible um, purple striping on the leaves um, this one in particular has a nice pattern on it now here we have um, one of my Musella Lassiocarpas uh, this was the one I had in the bathroom over winter um, it had been indoors all last year so it's quite small um, but it has done quite a bit better since I brought it out this year um, and it's other, the other one I got at the same time which I had outside last year I left the other one inside and I brought this one out last year has got quite nice and thick um, so yeah definitely grown much much better outside during the summer at least um, they're supposedly quite hardy um, but yeah I wouldn't risk leaving this outside um, over winter might get away with bringing it into a greenhouse as long as you can keep it from freezing um, or you know keep a, a maybe just a very light frost might be fine but yeah I wouldn't risk it below zero degrees celsius if it was up to me and this one here is my Namwa, tall Namwa. Um, it's only grown a few leaves this year. It did have another one or two which got broken off in the wind at some point. Um, but yeah, it's been growing all right. Uh, better than I thought, to be honest. A lot of people say that Namwa is quite a slow grower um, in cooler summers. And it's certainly not as fast as some of the other varieties. But to be honest, I don't see a huge difference between them. They all seem to grow a fairly similar rate for me. Down here we have a couple of dwarf Cavendish. And these ones have been left to grow on the patio. Um, yeah, very, very slow um, this year, as I mentioned before. They grew quite well last year on the patio, but we had a much better summer. Um, you can see the difference between these and the one I've got in the in the greenhouse. You definitely need that heat to get the Cavendish ones growing. Um, and this one is another dwarf Cavendish here. And this one I believe is a Grand Nain. Yeah, that's a Grand Nain. It's another Cavendish type. Um, this one is a Musa Sikimensis can see it has a purple striping. I don't know if it's the Bengal tiger. I think this was a seed grown one. Can't remember if I grew it from seed or not now. Did I have grown them from seed, so it could be one of mine. So over here is another dwarf Brazilian. You can see the difference between this one uh, and the one I have in the ground. Um, they do, as I mentioned earlier, they do grow much better if you can plant them in the ground. Um, but yeah, you can keep them in a container, you just got to keep on top of the watering and uh, fertilising. 
But the interesting thing with this is I noticed it has started to get a little pup. You just about see it side there. So yeah, that's the first um, pup on my any of my dwarf Brazilian banana plants. Um, so I'm quite happy about that because it's a, a pretty rare variety. I think I might have saw that uh, in the last video that I showed. I can't remember now. This one here is a tall Orinoco, regular Orinoco. Um, hasn't really grown any faster than any of the others. Um, done just as well in the pot really, maybe one or two leaves less. Um, I did have this in ground last year. Um, didn't bother planting it this year as I wanted to make space for the pawpaws and um, the fig tree. Uh, but yeah, it's it's doing fine. It does need a bigger pot if I'm going to keep it in a container though. Down here I have another Manzano banana. Um, yeah, again, pretty slow. Not doing too bad. So just for completeness, I was going to end the video, but I remembered the Dwarf Nanoir, um, which I think in the last update I did was um, almost completely dead. It was rotting away. I decided to bring it in and um, bare root it and you can see here it's growing away quite well now i've um, got it into a new mix probably do some other videos on how to save bananas in the future um, i have recorded some content for that um, i just need to put it all together and um, yeah so i'll probably do that as, as a separate video in the future uh, but yeah it's definitely growing away quite well now it's right in front of the the window here at the patio doors so it does get a lot of sun and um, it's also on a heat mat which has helped as well to get it rooted again so yeah that one's doing okay now we yeah, are probably not going to put it outside again now um want to get it established indoors and i'll have to keep it um protected indoors all winter as well i think that's all the bananas i've got in the garden may have missed one or two um, there's a quite, there are quite a few, um, but there are, as I mentioned, I do have a couple at the front of the house, another bajou and a Nset uh, Venture Cobson as well. So yeah, I'll probably do a separate video on those. So yeah, um, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll be sure to keep you all updated with how these get on. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I will also link to the overwintering uh, video I did last year for the Musabashu and I'll also be doing um, other updates uh, later in the season to show how I'm going to be overwintering the bananas this year. So yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.